Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. So today, what I thought I'd do, as something a little bit different as we're going to be brewing, is uh, actually show you what I do when I arrive at the brewery in the morning. So usually, I will rush around and get mashed in initially before I pick the camera up. I'm just gonna put this battery on charge over here. And then, um, and then I'll pick the camera up and start the vlog. But on this occasion, uh, well, oh dear. Looks like we won't be brewing at all anyway. Because this hasn't come on for some reason. I wonder why that was then. Oh well. Oh my goodness. I know what's happened. I think the, uh, the time has reset itself. So let's have a look at the programs. Can you see that? Program on, nothing, off, eight o'clock. Ah, that's the problem there then. So it was set to turn off, not turn on. So normally, what I will do is, uh, I'll set this to turn off at the end of a, like a three day brewing marathon because I'll have cleaner in the boil kettle and I'll leave the brewery to go home on a Friday at about five and I'll leave this running till eight o'clock with caustic in there to give it a real good clean and I use the timer to turn the panel off when I leave. Unfortunately for me, I forgot to set it to turn the panel back on. So, bugger, bugger. And I also left that tap on there, look. Well, there we go. So I guess we're not gonna be brewing today if that doesn't get up to temperature. Uh, that's fine, I can find something else to do. It just puts us back a day. So I guess I'll get all the tanks cleaned and get everything else put away. That was a start to the day that I didn't anticipate. I'm sure I tested it yesterday as well. These things happen though. So I'd better just uh, take five minutes to figure out what project we're gonna pick up next. Uh, because that was a cock up live on the vlog. Yeah, I have to think what project we're gonna do next actually. So uh, give me a minute to rejiggle the brain because I was all geared up for mashing in then. So we've decided to get the rest of the grain out for the rest of the batches of beer this week. And then what I've also gone and done is ordered some insulation from Screwfix and we're gonna come back a little bit to the pilot kit, I guess. Um, I made a mistake of storing Persid or acid in the plate chiller. I thought, well, that's what I normally do with mine because it's fully stainless, but this one, is brazed with copper look to seal it up so all the water came out green which means it was eating away on the brass or the copper whatever's in there so that's a no-no so what i've done is just flowed a very very dilute caustic sodium hydroxide solution around the system and we'll just rinse that out with water when it comes to using the kit which is fine i also leave sodium hydroxide in the kit as well, in the big kit. It's not a problem. It's only a problem if you've got any hyperchlorates in there that can destroy the stainless. And then moving on to the cooling system for, um, for these 60 litre fermenters, I've decided to get rid of the Maxi 310 so we'll just unplug that from the system and we'll put it back around the corner, around here. So we'll pop that back on the shelf under there. And then what I'm gonna do instead is we'll utilize our big glycol cooler. So it's basically, if you've not seen this before, it's, a, it's an AC unit, but we've taken the evaporator, we've very carefully spun it round and we've dumped it into, I can't lift that up because there's boxes on it, but in there is a basically a big one of these filled up with glycol 
and then it's got foam insulation all the way around it and then a wooden box to hold it in place so it's basically a big glycol ice cube bath and then what we do we have a submersible pump in there which pumps that glycol via this 15 mil pipe here out to the fermenters when it gets to a set temperature so the glycol is at about a 35 percent mix which means we can set it to about minus 10 minus 11 and when that goes through the cooling jackets on these fermenters it brings the temperatures down pretty readily so what I can do is tap into the lines here look and then we'll come out with a couple of uh, extra fittings and we'll just have these mounted on the wall and we'll supply all four of these fermenters from that system and we can get rid of this Maxi 310 in that respect then and then when these valves I don't know if I'm going to keep them on there or not I might reposition these I'm definitely not going to keep them on the lids as I did before I'm just draining the water out of this to make life a little bit easier but yeah I thought I'd keep these on the lids like this and then just have the pipes going into you know into the cooling coils like so but I discovered last week that any condensation that collects around here and drips really does start to fill all of this lot up and it's probably more water more condensation than I want on top of the fermenters so we'll probably mount these somewhere to the side uh, close enough of course for the probes to be able to be put on or in the buckets and then uh, we'll probably label them up with FV1 and the same here and then I've ordered some John Guest isolator valves or shut off valves that we can put on here so then we can take the bucket away without losing glycol from the system if you get my drift and uh, it's very easy as well just to expand <laughs> all of these boxes into the system because they're all designed to plug and play so you just unclip this and then you can see over here we've got the cable for these ones you just don't pull these two apart and insert your other one in between you know and then uh, instead of having three we'll have four on the system if we had one big glycol cooler then we could have these three we could have all these five all talking to each other and they would all operate as one unit of course the only drawback is if you've just got the one glycol cooler you've got no redundancy there whatsoever if it packs up so the way we're doing it by having separate glycol coolers for each tank behind each tank as you can see there then if one goes down we don't lose all of our cooling capacity for the whole brewery bit of a backup so I'm going to play about with that a little bit today get that put to bed tidied up insulated I might even pull these tanks out as well and get some expanding foam and kind of uh, fill in the gaps where the uh, where the insulation meets the meets the timber tidy that up a little bit and we've also got some insulation to clad around the cones so maybe we'll have time to do that today Jem seeing as we're we're down a brew day well, are you ready for tomorrow yeah we are never mind right then so I'm just going to jolly up to screw fix, get the insulation and the uh, other fittings that I've ordered and we'll come back and do a little bit of work in this corner. We'll get this done first though, if we don't get to foaming the big tanks today. That's nearby the lake. So we've picked up some insulation to, uh, to insulate the pipework over there. And we've got a new foam gun, because my other one's blocked. This looks a bit space age, doesn't it, really? With a little uh, extender on the end. So we'll be using that to insulate under these tanks at some point. Also grabbed a little bit of the foam gun cleaner, because I'm constantly getting it bunged up. And then somewhere in here, I don't know where I've just put them down. I might have walked them into the, uh, into the workshop. Yeah, I can see it. We've also picked up a new hole saw 
because I keep burning these bad boys out because I'm impatient. So that's 25mm which is big enough for this cable gland. Aww. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to shove it. No, not in you, Chance. You're alright, buddy. We're going to shove it in the side of this control panel so we can route these cables through because we've got like the boil pump and everything plugged into sockets and the mash pump all plugged into sockets and I don't want that, I'm going to wire them up to these switches here which are vacant so we can have the mash pump, the HLT pump and the boil pump above the PIDs accordingly. I just have to remember to turn it all on for when we go ahead and set the timer for tomorrow morning. So that's the job that actually does need doing so I've been meaning to do this for a while so I think I'll do that first before I start cladding the rest of the stuff. Chelsea boy. Here is the finished article. So if we turn it on, it's on and you can hear the mash pump is running. There she is. She lives underneath the HLT and she pumps through this copper pipe to recirculate and then when I want the water in wherever this is the takeoff valve and this is the return from the heat exchanger so we can recapture the heat, hot water even. Anyway, here is the panel, HLT's on. I fitted a different light in the boil, look at that! It's more red to me. Anyway, then that's the HLT pump off. So these are now, instead of being PID alarms, they've been repurposed to turn the pumps on and off. So we'll just set that to come on in the morning. That's good to go now. HLT pump will come on. HLT elements will come on. The lights will come on. We don't need the lights straight away in the morning, do we? Uh, make sure we've turned the HLT on on the wall. Otherwise, we'll have another failure. These are the uh, cables coming out the bottom of the panel now. A little bit tidier. All slung against the wall. And then they've obviously got quick disconnects before they attach to the pumps and whatnot. We've even got a little switch at the side of that pump as well, just in case we have to turn it off in an emergency, because that's the big one. Anyway, that's done now. So we'll get all of our insulation. Hey up, bud. How do? And we'll come across here, and we'll have a, a little bit of uh, we'll do a bit of work. That's right, what I'm trying to say. We'll do a bit of work on this now. We've got an hour or two, I think to kind of rejig it. So we want to see the four fermenters on the top, each with their own cooling coil. I have ordered some John Guest isolators for this. Jesus Christ, they're five pound each and I need 16 of them. It's like 80 quid for isolating valves. It's silly expensive. Anyway, I'm gonna go and cry in the corner. I'll come back when we've got this maxi chiller moved and we've cut into our supply pipes. So I really struggled to move this IBC because God damn it, it's got a thousand liters of water in it. But we managed to pull it out the way and I've finished off lagging those pipes at the back there. And then we've kind of brought it across but left just enough, enough gapage so I can get in there with a connector. Yep, like that. So, this connector is going to be maybe the return. And uh, so each one of these will have a pipe coming out of the top and it'll loop around to an FV, which of course you've all seen, I think, just has the cooling coils dipped inside. There we go. So uh, each FV will have its own dedicated feed line with a couple of isolation valves on there. All of these are going to sit on the wall separately where I can access them 
relatively easy. Um, I've not decided yet if they're going to go up here or just up here somewhere out of the way. I can reach to set them if and when I need to. And then on the side, or for the, for the supply, we're going to have this little manifold here. I am missing one motorised valve. So that'll tee into the supply line over there like that. And then we'll have all of these just sat there controlling the intake lines for the fermenting coils, the cooling coils. So the coils will have to go through the ISO valves, through the motorised valves, should I say. And then they'll come back up and along and they will tie up with their companion on the return side. So we'll have flown return coming out to each fermenter and on that as well I will piggyback the um, the probe cable so we're going to extend these and put them on an XLR cable so we can remove the uh, whole shebang should we have to and I'm also going to do the same with this these are going to be extended with an XLR cable on the side and plugged into the box so inside the box we just have the sensor cables coming into the back of the STC 1000 and then the uh, the switched feed for the motorized valves here so you've got positive negative and this relay down here just reverses the flow that's that one actually so it's positive negative or negative positive either way it opens and closes the valves so if we just stick an XLR cable on the side and then feed it to the valve and make sure that that cable, all the cables run with the supply and return lines on the manifold then we can keep everything back to the wall and neat apart from your tails which will be accompanied by a probe so you just plug your tails into the top of the fermenter we don't have a thermal well on here so I think we'll just be either taping the thermometer to the side of the tank or indeed I might take some of this stainless steel and make a thermal well to go through the lid as well we'll see I'm not sure yet and then uh, when we come to disconnect it there'll be a case of four ISO valves just one two three four and then we'll just disconnect the central stem and this whole thing will come away and then any glycol that remains in this section will remain in that section and the glycol that's in the lines will remain in the lines so if we just have a little stem of about an inch then every time we disconnect we potentially lose an inch of glycol but there are ways of doing it so uh, you can get the air bubble to go into the return and save the glycol in the line or whatnot. bit fiddly but for the sake of topping up the glycol probably once a year with a litre it's not going to be a big problem so before I disappear off home what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to take our new foam gun the other one was uncontrollably leaky so I had to buy a new one but yeah we're going to take our new foam gun and we're going to use some of this single component mounting foam filler foam, fix and fill foam if you like and uh, we're going to apply some of this foam to the gaps in the fermenter like here. Oh yes. Oh, it's like piping custard. If that's even a thing. I guess it is now. Let's bring you in. We can have a little bit of a shot of what I can only describe as absolutely riveting footage. This will keep everybody glued to their monitors for the next five minutes no doubt oh yes look at that it's like bake off only with expanding foam foam off maybe the trick though here is underneath getting under here and putting it in so it doesn't fall out again so previously I actually laid the tanks on the backs but I don't think that's possible this time round 
and if it starts to fall on the floor it does make a bit of a mess and there's not really a lot you can do about it if it lets go it lets go like that's about to let go there I think and you don't want it on your hands like I've just done it's the worst thing in the world to get off this ah. anyway I've got all these to do I've got all these to do down here so yeah I'm not gonna bore you all with uh, the great British foam off we'll just skip right to the end when I've completed the task that makes much more sense doesn't it I think so well it's kind of not the neatest job in the world but it will do for now so I'm gonna to have to come back another day when all this is cured and try and get underneath this edge that's what happens when you get it on your finger look you see that black smear anyway that's kind of enough uh, dilly dallying for one day in the brewery we should have brewed today but alas it never worked out so we'll do that tomorrow uh, so in the meantime I'm gonna go home and uh, the sun's out so we might get a little bit of Indian summer sunshine eh? we shall see we shall see anyway we'll see you tomorrow when fingers crossed everything turns on and we will be brewing cheers